My rabbits can be true support animals to me, especially when I'm upset. You know, rabbits like to chew. <laughs> We all know that. Oh. <laughs> I sometimes feel like breathing in hair instead of air, you know. Just like some people, I prefer being alone too. Hello everyone, I am Mariska and I'm the bunny mom of four adorable rabbits. In this video I'm going to answer your questions because yes, this is the Q&A. And some of you were kind enough to post questions for me. So I'm going to answer them and I've seen some very nice ones. So let's start right away. What do you love most about having house rabbits in your life? What I love most about having rabbits in my life is their sweet, good-natured company. They're those sweet little fluff balls. They hop around the house, look at me curiously, do naughty things and are so, well, so cute. Most of my bunnies love being petted so I can cuddle them and lie next to them and play games with them. Since I have rabbits in the house, I haven't felt lonely because they are always here and they always, you know, they always have that sweet little face that I, I just melt when looking at them and that makes me happy. In which way do rabbits help you when you need it? My rabbits can be true support animals to me, especially when I'm upset. So when I'm, for instance, crying about something, they can feel it. And especially Flipje, she can get a bit upset herself, so she can start thumping. So at that moment, she isn't really a help, but she can show me some kind of a mirror. So when I'm feeling upset about something, she can show me that something's wrong with me. So at sometimes I don't even realize I'm upset about something or worried, worried about something. So Flippy can really feel that and Sarah can do that as well by holding up a mirror to, to me because then she gets very naughty, she starts chewing on furniture or she's, she's, she gets very restless. So for instance, when I'm nervous about something, Sarah can get restless and then I know Hmm, maybe there's something with me instead of her. And then I can do something about it. And also when I'm very upset, I can cuddle my rabbits. Uh, you know, they trust me. I can even lie beside them. And it's, it has a very calming effect on me. So really when I'm very, very upset, they really help me through. So that's how they support me. Do you have a favorite rabbit breed? Of course, I'm not supposed to choose between my children, but I somehow have a weak spot for Sierra. And Sierra has a French lob. And at a certain moment in my life, I just wanted to know what it was like to have a big bunny. <laughs> so I, uh, I got Sierra and she was so, so adorable as a baby. She had these huge ears and they were, you know, the size of them was disproportionate with the rest of her body and I fell in love with her and since then I, I prefer French lobs because they are so cute they can be calm but also very curious and Sierra can be extremely naughty <laughs> but I just love their character and I love the, you know that they are big you have a lot of space to caress <laughs> yes there's something special about French lobs. Some people consider French lobs as little puppies and I think that's kind of the truth. Do you think every rabbit can be bonded? I don't think every rabbit can be bonded because, you know, just like people, every rabbit is different. They all have their own character. So some rabbits get very lonely when they are single. And they, well, they need a companion, otherwise they get very destructive and sad. Even They can even get a depression. Whereas other rabbits, like my Flipje, they prefer the company of humans. Flipje has always been a single rabbit and she's always been with just, you know, one person to take care of her. And I can tell she, she prefers the company of me. Especially when rabbits are older, it can be very hard to get used to a new companion. Especially when they've lost a companion already. Sometimes things are just good the way they are. So when you've tried to bond your rabbit to multiple other rabbits and none of them were a success, maybe it's just a sign that there's no companion for them or they prefer to just be a single rabbit and have you. You know, just like some people, I prefer being alone too. 
when is a rabbit a senior rabbit? And this question is about, you know, the change of uh, di two different palettes because there are certain palettes for senior rabbits. When a rabbit is a senior rabbit actually depends on its breed because smaller breeds usually reach an older age than bigger breeds like for instance French Lops. So smaller breeds usually reach senior age around the age of seven, but they can, you know, they can, can become 12 years old. So it really depends on, you know, also on their health and such. Whereas bigger breeds, uh, they can only reach five to six years old. Then, you know, they uh, become a senior when they're four or five years old. But I suggest just looking at your bunny, you know, when your bunny is, you know, obviously getting older, maybe he's getting more, you know, hunched back <laughs> uh, or getting some health problems, then it can be advisable to switch to different pellets, to uh, senior pellets, because those contain more nutrients, uh, which are suitable for older rabbits. I've also noticed that these pellets can be a bit smaller, maybe they are easier to eat. So uh, it, it really depends on your rabbit. My Flippy is already nine years old and she can sometimes uh, be ill uh, at the belly. And then she's really, you know, she doesn't eat anymore and she's really unwell. So I decided to switch to senior pellets for her several years ago because my feeling said that would be the right thing to do. At which age did you get your first bunny and what did you name him? I don't remember exactly uh, at what age I got my first bunny, but I think I was around maybe seven or eight years old. And it was a really cute a brown rabbit with upstanding ears and we named him Knabbeltje. And that's a Dutch word, so it kind of means little nibbler <laughs> because he liked nibbling on things. You know, rabbits like to chew, <laughs> we all know that. And well, at first we had him outside in the garden in a hutch and he had this pen so he wasn't completely confined to, well, you know, a prison. <laughs> But we didn't know much about rabbits at the time. So, you know, he got very lonely. He was a single rabbit. And when we went outside in winter to give him food and water, we found out that his water was completely frozen. And that was so, you know, we felt really guilty about that. So we brought him inside and he got very happy. Since then, we've never kept a rabbit outside of the house because we love the company and we love seeing our rabbits happy. How do you survive molting season with four rabbits? And yes, the person who asked this question uh, said, well, <laughs> I sometimes feel like breathing in hair instead of air. And I can really relate to that because, you know, having four rabbits in the house in molting season, that can be quite hard. <laughs> You know, when they are all molting and uh, thankfully they aren't usually all molting at exactly the same time. It does overlap, but it's not exactly the same. So, but I usually find whole piles of uh, fur in the corners of rooms and such, and even on the radiator, uh, on lamp fittings, uh, in my hair, on my clothes, in my face. I breathe them in. I sometimes have to cough. <laughs> So yes, it can be hard, but you know, I survive it by uh, brushing my bunnies as much as I can. And then when I brush a bunny, I take him or her outside because then the fur, you know, stays outside. And I'm very, very sorry to my neighbors when I do that. I try to, you know, when I brush them to put the hair in a little bucket so it won't fly <laughs> fly over the fence of my garden and maybe get into the food of neighbors just eating their barbecue food. Um, but that, that can help a lot to brush them. And I also vacuum a lot. I have this Dyson vacuum, so it's easy to, you know, to just get it and vacuum quickly. So that really helps. But in spite of that, it's, uh, you know, the house isn't very clean all the time. What makes rabbits for you your favorite pets? Rabbits are my favorite pets because they are simply adorable, good natured, and they are so pure. When I'm, I'm around people, I know I have a lot of good friends and family, but I've 
I have experience with less nice people as well. And whenever I'm around my rabbits, I just feel safe and comfortable. And because they are simply good natured and pure, I feel safe because they, they, they don't disappoint me. They don't have a hidden agenda. Um, what I see is what I get. And I can be completely myself around them. And of course that can also be with some other pets, but rabbits have some more advantages, like they are usually quiet and um, you know, when, when I leave the house, I usually uh, put them in their pens so they won't be destructive. So for me, that's I have some furniture I really love, so <laughs> I, I like to keep an eye on my rabbits. And you know, when I leave the house, I know they are safe and my furniture is safe. What are your bunnies favorite treats and are they the same between your bunnies? The favorite treats of my bunnies are a piece of carrots and of course those are not official treats but still I consider these uh, pieces of carrots as treats because they are quite sweet. You shouldn't be giving them uh, a lot of carrots and they are all so enthusiastic when I give them carrots. They know exactly when I'm going to give them carrots because that's in the evening before I'm going to bed. And you know, when I'm a bit late with giving them a piece of carrot, they get very restless and they will start begging and such. <laughs> so this is really the best moment of their day. Aside from that, I also love giving my rabbits, you know, real treats. I have some treats of the Dutch brand Manko 9 and my rabbits love those. And I also like giving them bunny muesli. So that's, uh, those are, you know, different treats all together in a, in a sack. And I can tell Flipje, you know, she doesn't like all of those treats. She's a bit picky. <laughs> and, you know, she prefers some of the treats over others. Whereas my other rabbits, they just divulge them. <laughs> they just, you know, run towards these streets and eat them and nothing's wrong. But Flipje, hmm, she really wants to choose. Do you have any tips about keeping bunnies outside? When you'd like to keep rabbits outside, I really recommend having at least two rabbits. Because rabbits outside, you know, a single rabbit outside can get very, very lonely. Because, you know, when they're outside and the weather is bad and... You know, you haven't got, maybe you haven't got enough time to go outside and give your rabbit the attention he or she needs. Then, you know, it's kind of like a prison and he can get a depression even. Aside from that, it's important to have a safe and warm rabbit hat, especially in winter, because then it can grow very cold and the rabbit hat needs to be isolated and it needs to contain a lot of straw so your bunny can stay warm. Whereas in summer, the rabbit hat needs to be outside of the sun, so you, you need real shade. Not just a parasol, but uh, you know, a really thick <laughs> leaf tree or maybe uh, some, you know, uh, a roof above the rabbit hat. And your rabbits also need a lot of hopping space. And they like to hop through grass, but when you uh, have grass, you will need to protect it because rabbits can dig holes. <laughs> so uh, there are a lot of things you need to consider. Uh, also, uh, there can be predators depending on your country. But, you know, every country has cats and rabbits can be really scared of cats. They can even, you know, their heart can stop when they see a cat because they can you know get a shock from that they can be so afraid and so you will need to protect them when you want to bring your rabbit outside it's also very important to choose the right time for it so somewhere in spring or maybe in summer but before august because then your rabbit has the chance to grow a winter coat so you know he is protected against cold do you have some great tips for bonding rabbits this question is from somebody who would like to give a, a future friend to a bunny. She still has a young bunny. When you'd like to bond your bunnies, it's very important to let them get to know each other gradually. So what I did with Poppy and Silver when I introduced them to each other was to put them, you know, each on one side of a, of a fence, of a pen. And then they could actually, you know, uh, go to each other and, you know, uh, sniff at each other through the bars of the pen and they instantly liked each other they were very curious so i think this was very very easy and at a certain moment they started 
you know, licking each other through the bars. And then I could go a step further and, you know, let them together under supervision and see if things kept going all right. And in the end, they, you know, they could stay together without problems. When your rabbits don't hit it off right away, you can bring them to a neutral area that isn't too large but not too small either. You want them to be able to make contact to, with each other and not hide from each other, but they also want to be safe enough. So for uh, Silver and Syra, I chose uh, the upstairs hallway and I, uh, you know, I put them in there and I sat between them and I let them hop around me and, you know, make contact with each other. And, you know, that went quite well. But it's very important to, you know, keep them under supervision at all times because some rabbits really, you know, they can bite each other. They can even start fighting each other and that can get very rough. Some rabbits even want to kill the other one. So maybe when that happens, you know, it's maybe they're not the right bonds for each other. Anyway, I, I would suggest having them get to know each other gradually. So maybe you have two pens in the living room or wherever your rabbits live. And when one of them is hopping around the space, he or she can go to the pen of the other and they can, you know, sniff at each other. And, you know, when people get to know each other, they usually don't hit it off right away. Well, some people do, <laughs> but, you know, it's more natural to have them... Uh, get to know each other and then they can you know see for themselves if they like each other or not so these were the q a questions i had for you i would like to thank you for asking me these questions i really like having contact with you so if you have any comments or other questions please put them in the comment section because i love reading them also if you like this video it really helps me if you Hit the like button and if you don't want to miss any future videos, you can subscribe to my channel. And then we will see each other next time. Bye bye.